Mrs. Shea here. So today I am starting a 48 hour reading vlog. Me and my girl Izzy over at Happy For Now have decided that we want to just take a couple days and focus on reading and we're really excited to do this together. So today is Thursday, so we're doing a Thursday and Friday. Um, both of our partners are home on the weekend, so we like to spend time with them. So we opted to do a 48 hour kind of midweek so that it worked better and we felt like we actually read enough for it to be something that you guys would enjoy. So I'm gonna tell you this morning, I'm just gonna sit down and read some manga. I haven't really sat and read manga for a few, for a bit. So that's how I'm going to start off this vlog. Right now I've got four volumes that are my focus. I've got the final volume of Shortcake Cake. I cannot believe I have not finished this series. I mean, I know the end couple already because of volume 11, but I just need to finish up the story because I want to see everybody happy. Happy forevers, you know, or happy for nows as we say. Um... I'm dying. I need to read this. This will probably be my top priority because everybody keeps trying to talk to me about it. So I need to get this read. And then I need some time with my precious children. I love them. I need to I need to check in on them and see how they are. And then we finally got volume six of Night of the Ice. So I would love to sit and read this. So these are what I'm going to kind of sit down and read this morning you know, have a good reading morning. And then from there, um, today's Thursday. So I always get together with May from over at Maeve Ever Reading. Her channel's linked down below. Uh, today we're just going to go get boba. Sometimes we go like get food and then go book shopping, but we're both feeling a little, a little strapped for cash right now. So we are going to just go get boba and visit and catch up because we haven't gotten together in a couple weeks because of schedules. And yes, so very, very excited to get together with her. And then I think I'm just kind of chilling and reading. Um, I do like to play Minecraft <laughs> if you're new to my channel. So the audiobook that I listen to while I play Minecraft right now is Lothair from the Immortals After Dark series. Yes, I am already too Lothair if you saw other vlogs because... I've just been on a deep dive of the series. I am doing the Faded Mates reading order, if you're curious. And you can just Google Immortals After Dark Faded Mates and the order will come right up. Or just go to the Faded Mates um, page and you'll see it right there. So, anyhow, that's how I'm going to start this morning. That's how I'm going to start this vlog. Um, I am currently starting a reread of Dark Song by Christine Feehan. That was like my favorite book of last year. So I really want to do a reread and see if it's just as impactful on a second read as it was on the first. And I feel like I've had enough time away from it now to really be able to test that and enjoy that. So I'll be doing that a little bit during this vlog as well. Um, so yeah, let's start there. And I will keep you guys up to date on what I think I'm going to read next. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I mean, I kind of saw it coming and I kind of suspected this, but oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Because now, like, the stakes are even higher for now than they were initially. And she didn't even understand it. And she doesn't understand the power that she has in this house. So... I don't know what to do or what to think right now, and I'm I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. Volume 7 is going to be amazing because now that, now that certain things have been discovered and revealed in this volume, um, according to the last page, now is going to make some very drastic decisions based on those, so I'm really interested in how that's going to play out. So... Um, yes, go read Something's Wrong With Us if you're not, because this is like high stakes. It's kind of like romantic suspense in a way. It has a slight like thriller element to it. I mean, not heavily at this point, but I believe the deeper into the series we get, the more thrillery it's going to get. So I'm here for it. So definitely pick this one up if you haven't. I will shout its praises forever because the art is stunning. 
let alone the amazing story crafting that's happening here. So with that, um, let's go ahead and go to something a little bit sweeter and finish off Shortcake Cake. Okay, so I just finished volume 12 of Shortcake Cake and this was so sweet. I actually really loved how this ended because we get to see the final coupling, obviously, and we also get to see a character that you grow very attached to early on in the series get his own happy ending, and I really loved seeing how that developed because... It's funny, like, I'm going to have to go back and read it straight through now because I feel like I missed something that I should have caught on to the first time um, from the last side story. So it's about, about half of this volume is the actual, like, finishing, and then we've got, I think, three bonus stories after that, but... I really loved this. I really loved the series as a whole. I I do need to do a reread of the whole series now that it's complete, and I plan on doing that soon. I have a lot of series that are finishing this year that I've got, like, a pile of rereads of the entire series straight through that I want to do. But this was really sweet. I'm definitely going to be keeping it in my collection, and I really enjoyed it. So up next, I think I need more sweet, and so I'm going to go with my precious children in Sweat and Soap. The moving in is official. I loved this volume so very much. But I do like that the conversations that were had within this volume felt like a real life couple, like moving in together and adjusting to living together because they're both used to living on their own. And Asako being as mild-tempered as she is, um, you worry about her with a strong personality like Natori in that situation. But man, I loved Asako in this volume. She really, like, came out of her shell and did what she needed to do, and I freaking love her for it. And I love the mangaka for giving that to her. And this was a really interesting one because we see Naturi thinking ahead to, like, their anniversary and what he wants to give her then. And, like, he does a really sweet thing for her birthday. And then one thing happens and, you know, there's a guy speaking English and so she doesn't really understand what's being said. And he gives her a business card and, you know, she takes it just so she's not rude. But Naturi understands English so he knew what the guy was saying and yeah, so that kind of clouded her birthday and that had longer effects than even Asako understood. And gosh, I could gush about this forever. I love this series so much. Like y'all need to be reading Sut and Soap because this is a really great look at a really realistic adult relationship, you know, and the pros and cons of living. Whew. With your partner, and it's just so, so good. I just love it so very much. So now, with that said, I am going to get to Night of the Ice before I go fully get ready for the day and get everything else done. Okay, so I just finished Volume 6 of Night of the Ice. Now, in this one, um, we see progress moving forward on both of their accounts, and we get some understanding on some things that were hinted at earlier in the series. And there's a big injury for our skater that we have to deal with. This volume was chuck full of things. And I love that it's taking place over such a vast amount of time. Because it makes things um, work a lot smoother, a lot faster. Um, we're in Olympic training season right now. And it's fantastic. I really love this. I love this a whole lot. But I'm kind of a figure skating, like, fangirl. I love figure skating. So this is the kind of volume of manga that's right up my alley. So I'm glad to have started this vlog off so strong. Um, it's now 10 in the morning. <laughs> I got going pretty early this morning. But I need to, like, get ready for the day, take care of a couple other things. 
and then go meet up with Maeve to do boba. I've never had boba before, so we're going to go get boba together. And I have a light song trying to get into my lap all of a sudden. Say hi to the people, light song. Anyhow. <laughs> Insistent little bugger. Are you comfy? Okay. <laughs> anyway, I guess I'm not going to get up, but I don't even have manga to reach for. So... I'm going to cuddle my cat for a minute and then I'm going to get ready for the day, take care of a few things, <sighs> and then get back to reading. I will make some progress on Lothair, obviously, while I'm driving to meet up with Maeve because we're meeting up about a 20-minute drive from my home. So, yeah. Anyhow, that's what's going on there, and I will chat with you guys once I've read some more. Did you get any of the boba? Mm-hmm. Good. Texture-wise, it's not my favorite, but yeah. I'm okay with it. Hello. So, it's been a minute since we've chatted. Um, since I last chatted with you, I've read a good chunk of Lothair. I've got about two hours left on the audiobook, so I'll probably finish that up tomorrow. Um, outside of that, I think for tonight, I'm just going to focus on my reread of Dark Song because I'm really feeling like getting back in this world and spending some time with these characters that I love so much. On this reread I'm actually tabbing and annotating some of my favorite things and so that's what I'm gonna work on tonight. I don't know that I'll vlog a ton of that um, so I'll check in with you guys in the morning. I haven't fully dressed down for the night so I'm gonna go ahead and film this clip. Um. I'm only like on the third chapter of this book and I remember already why I love it so much. Um, this is Dark Song by Christine Pihan, by the way. Um, I don't have the dust jacket on it. <laughs> I typically don't when I'm reading a hardback. But I'm going to prop you up here. Let's see. There we go. I guess I should put these up so you can actually see my eyes and not just see glare. <laughs> so the reason I love this book so much is... I see so much of the early parts of my relationship with my husband in Pharaoh and Elisabetta. Um, I, my first marriage wasn't great. I had a lot of baggage coming into it. I had lots of preconceived notions about me and my worth and, you know, that I wouldn't be worthy of someone. And a lot of the things that Pharaoh is telling Elisabetta as they're getting to truly know one another, because, you know, she, from all of her traumas of what happened with um, the previous relationship that she knew, is she spent some time healing and, like, physically healing from it. She still mentally has a long way to go. And just the things that Pharaoh says to her, reaffirming that she's worthy, she's not a coward, that she can take her time to relearn things and that their relationship is truly their own and shouldn't be judged by other people. They can think whatever they want, but their relationship is theirs and that he's perfectly happy with their relationship. And I love Pharaoh so much. He's one of my favorite Carpathian heroes of all time because of that. Probably one of my favorite Feehan heroes, if I'm honest. 
um, because he's old fashioned. He would, he would do anything to protect her. He loves her so much and he would kill for her. He would die for her. He would do anything he had to for her. And I love him for it. And just the patience that he's shown her and he's helping her along. Um, one thing that Elizabetta and I have in common is the people we were previously with made making decisions hard. We were unduly punished for making decisions. And so the way he's like, okay, well, if making decisions is hard, I'm not going to decide everything for you. How about I pick out, you know, just an example is clothes. He's like, how about I pick out two dresses and you pick, pick which one you're going to wear today. And then you wear the other one tomorrow. And it's amazing. Like I just love how he's done that. And my husband has really tried to do kind of the same thing with me. And I still struggle with it to this day. I mean, he and I have been together seven and a half years and I still tr struggle making decisions sometimes because for me, um, it was safer to just say, whatever you want, I'll find something. And so I kind of lived by that mentality for a long time, like going to get dinner. Um, food decisions are the hardest for me because those are the ones that I got the most flack for in my previous relationship. So my poor husband is a saint and, you know, he still gets frustrated with me not making a decision in that regard some days, but he's really patient with me and... You know, whenever I truly want something, I make sure I speak up and I say it. The other day, I I said I wanted Panda. And he was like, who are you? What have you done with my wife? Because I very rarely crave Panda Express. Like, let's just be straight here about that. It's not something I crave often. But I really was feeling a hankering for it. I'm like, hey, I want to go to Panda for dinner tonight. And he's like, um, um, did your phone get stolen? Are you okay? I'm like, no, it's me. I want Panda. And it's just not something I crave often because usually when I have cravings, they're for things he doesn't really enjoy. So I like go get them with my friends and stuff. And for dinner, I'm just like, oh, I had what I wanted for lunch. So whatever. And so because that was just easier for me because then I didn't have to necessarily take what he thought into consideration. And it just, you know, that's the kind of stuff that makes this so good and then it's wrapped up in paranormal vampire goodness and life mates. And it just makes me happy. And I know that Christine Feehan is not an author everyone's going to love. I mean, I've been reading her for years and I just adore it. But again, her heroes are very alpha, very protective. Some would definitely kill for anybody. And um, it's much more... Immortals After Dark than, like, Side Changeling, if I had to choose one or the other. Um, definitely closer to Immortals After Dark, this particular series. Um, not exactly the same, obviously, but the way the heroes are written are much more similar to this series than Side Changeling. Because I feel like those guys are softer compared to these alphas, and they... I do, you guys. So, anyways, if you're needing a reference, I'm getting rambly here, but I just, y'all, I love this book. And I know that a lot of you probably won't ever pick it up, but if you ever do, or if you've been through a really bad relationship and you want to see how someone should be treated and spoken to, oh, Pharaoh is amazing. And I love Pharaoh so much. But yes, anyhow, I'm going to get back to my reread tonight. Definitely not checking in again until tomorrow because I'm going to finish getting ready for the night. And yeah, just know that if you've been through anything like that, I love you and you deserve love and respect and to be cherished by someone and someone who will be patient with you. And I hope you can be the person who is all those things for your partner as well. With that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hello, good morning. It is officially Friday 
and day two of this 48 hour reading vlog. So last night I just read some more in Dark Song. You saw a clip talking about that. And I read a tiny bit more after that, but not a lot. So I don't really have much more to say than what I said last night. But this morning I did get up and get some reading done. I read a couple volumes of manga and I read volume two and three of Those Not So Sweet Boys. So this one is taking a slightly unexpected turn, but not that unexpected. Basically, throughout mostly volume three, there's a bit of a love triangle where two of the boys are having feelings for Nanami. And the other guy in the, like, triangle is, like, one of my favorites. I want him to be happy. He deserves the world. So I, I'm i sad that he's not the one destined to be with Nanami because it's very clear who Nanami is destined to be with. And, yeah. So I adore this, but this little turd nugget just keeps interrupting everything and he is not my favorite character but I do really like the way the story is developing in these volumes I'm really loving the direction still so I still recommend getting into this series um by far it's my favorite from this mangaka that I've read they've also done um that wolf boy is mine and love and focus so this is also going to be the longest that I've read from them, and I believe it's still ongoing in Japan. I can't quite remember, but um, yes, all I know is it's their longest, and I'm so glad because on the others, it's like, I want more story. Give me more story. So clearly the mangaka has been listening and giving people more story, so I'm very excited. So what I'm going to do now is I need to reread volume six of Living Room Matsunaga-san, because I got the physical copy, and this is the last one that I know that I owned digitally. After that, it's all going to be new content for me, so I'll have more to say about those. And then I do want to continue with The Sign of Affection. I have not gotten to this volume yet, which is a crime against humanity, so that's going to happen in this vlog. After that, I've got four volume ones that came out from Viz recently, Three of them were sent to me and one I picked up on my own. So I thought I would just kind of tie that into this vlog as well. So I've got Kirby Manga Mania Volume 1. I've got Undead Unlock Volume 1. I've got World Peace Volume 1. And then the Peace de Resistance, Resistance, as people tell me, is Fist of the North Star Volume 1. This is the one that I am most leery of because I don't handle a lot of violence well and I believe this one is fairly violent so there's a chance I might DNF this one I'm warning you now and that's not anything against the mangaka it is I don't do well with graphic violence like I don't really watch a lot of thriller horror movies because of the gore and the violence. So if it gets to be too much, I'm going to have to put this down. I'll probably put it in a giveaway or, you know, give it to someone who would appreciate it. I don't know what I'll do. But, ooh, ooh, so sorry. But yes, I'm still going to try it because I am curious. And since Viz was kind enough to send it to me, I do want to give it a solid try. So I'm going to work on the two that are not Viz titles first, and then we'll get into the Viz titles and we'll go from there. Y'all, they are just too stinking cute. I love them. I love them so much. They must be protected at all costs. I love them. And the progress that their like friendship potential relationship made in this volume was really good um she's still a bit naive to some things and because she's deaf that does make some things more interesting they have to try a little bit harder at their relationship and it's just really sweet to read about I really love them this is a series that I'm gonna be recommending for a long time and I just love it so y'all need to pick this one up I can't tell you again because, well, I will tell you again. I'll tell you every time I read a volume because it's just so good. I hate that I waited so long to read this volume, but just know that I regret it and you need to read the series and just enjoy it.
because it's amazing. Okay, so I just reread volume six of Lumiru Matsunaga-san, and I did not remember the ending of this volume, so I'm very excited for volume seven when we get it, and... Oh, she has two very good options in a partner because I like Matsunaga, but I also like the other guy right now. I like them both for different reasons. I mean, obviously, she's going to end up with Matsunaga because that's the kind of series this is. But I really like the other guy. I want to see him happy. And so, yes, it's it's so good. I'm so excited to have reread this and refreshed myself so that as the physical volumes start coming out and I'm getting new content for me, I'm very, very excited and up to date and everything's fresh and good. So with that said, I'm going to dive into the four from Viz. I think I'm going to start with Fist of the North Star because that is the one I am least likely to enjoy. So I think I want to, since I've come off so many things I loved. I think it's good to sandwich it in here rather than save it to the end because I might like put it off. So I think that's what I'm going to do next is Fist of the North Star. If I don't like it, please don't hate me. It's just a graphic violence thing, I'm sure. Okay, so I actually finished all of Fist of the North Star. Now, this is a series that is incredibly well done, but it is more violent than I typically love to read. So I will be passing this on. I actually think my younger brother who reads manga would really enjoy this series. So I'm going to pass this along to him. So it's going to a good home, I promise. But I can definitely appreciate this story and appreciate the whole message behind what's going on in this series. And I, like I say, it's just not my personal taste. But I'm still going to give it four stars because it was really well done. It was really good, but it was just not my cup of tea. So this is going to go to a good home. It's not going to stay with me, but it's going to be nearby and it'll go to someone who enjoys this kind of a story more than I would and they'll appreciate it more than I did. All right. So I just finished World Peace and this one doesn't appeal to me at all. Um, I thought I was going to have more problems with Fist of the North Star than this one, but I was wrong. This one was boring. The whole concept I just did not enjoy, and it's definitely not for me. I'm going to pass this on to that same brother because I think he'll like it. But yeah, like I was just bored out of my gourd and the whole concept of the earth becoming the size of a basketball because of an Alien race was just too much for me. Not my thing. Alrighty, so I just finished Undead Unlock Volume 1, and I actually really enjoyed this one. Um, this one is definitely fueled by comedy. So basically, he's undying, he can't die. And our girl Fuko, she basically deals out incredible amounts of unluck for people that she cares about. So the more she cares about a person, the bigger the ramifications of her like touch and love are. And so they are like this tag team duo now. And it is so funny and so cute because all she wants is a really sweet romance. And she's with this rough and tumble guy who basically because he regenerates so often is naked most of the time. Granted, he they do a just big black panel. It's not like he's running around with his dong, you know, visible in the manga. They do black that out because this was a Shonen Jump title. But yes, I've really been enjoying it. I laughed out loud several times. And it's just a really fun gimmick for a story. Um, I think I'm going to continue this one. Um, but yeah, I had a good time with this one. Solid four stars. Um, I'm going to sit on it. Um, maybe I'll get on the Shonen Jump app and read ahead and see how I feel and go from there to see if I'm going to pick up any more physical copies. But yes, Undead Unlock has my stamp of approval. It's a lot of fun. Alrighty, so I just finished the Kirby Manga Mania Volume 1, and this was really cute. This is definitely all ages. Any kid could read this. But I don't think I'm going to pick up any more. Um, like, it doesn't really have a fluid story or anything. If you're a Kirby fan, you're going to enjoy it. But yeah, it was just okay. Like I say, I don't think I'm going to continue this one. And I do think I'm going to pass this one on to my younger brother. So the four from Viz 
Um, I'm only keeping one of the four. The rest are going to go to my brother because I think he'll enjoy them more. And they will be in better hands over there. So with that said, I'm going to like take a shower, take some me time, listen to Lothair, kind of work on that for a while. Um, it's like... 11.30, 11.45, something like that. So I'll also figure out like lunch and all those kinds of things. But it's been a really great manga reading morning. I'm living my best life here and really enjoying it. So. Hi. So it's been a minute since I've recorded anything for this vlog. But I have finished two things since we last chatted. Steve and I are going to go and get a treat. I've taken a shower. I never got around to makeup today because we didn't really leave the house. I didn't really leave the house today anyway. Not until now. But... We're just going to go get some ice cream cones because it's 90 degrees and it's 8.30 at night. <laughs> we just want to be cool. Um, anyways, so Lothair, fantastic. Five stars. My favorite in IAD so far. Lothair would burn the world for his bride. He's proven it over and over again. Now we get to meet his bride and it's amazing. I love it. The way everything came together and people who you weren't sure were woven into the story, were actually woven into the story, and it was fantastic. I loved it so much. Highly recommend. Yes. And then I decided to can... I was about halfway through my audiobook for Changeling by Yasmin Galanor. Um, if you watched my wrap-up or you watched the live show over on Nicole's channel, you know we all kind of had mixed feelings about the first book in the series, where it was just kind of a product of its time. Well, sadly, like, book two is kind of in that same vein. It kind of does some of the same things. The body image stuff from book one isn't quite as present in book two. But, you know, comments about, like, how much they eat and stuff are still present. So, you know, it's still kind of there, but not as, not as blatantly or as bad as book one. And this one involves our shifter mix. And she's amazing. I love her as a character. So I did like this book slightly more just because I found her very interesting. And her coming into her true powers were was a very interesting and compelling thing as well. And then she meets this shifter guy, but she's dating a human guy. So there's kind of a love triangle thing there. And so I think that's just kind of going to be the MO for this series is each of these girls are going to have two guys that they could or should be with. And it's just going to take forever to figure it out. Is kind of what I'm calling right now. I do think I'm going to go on to the third book. And then kind of decide for the rest of the series. Kind of like I treat my manga series. Because this one is a longer series. And I have access to the audiobooks via any play. Plus I've had subscribers send me the first three books. I figured I'll at least give it that much. Give it the first three and then I'll know for sure where I stand with the series. So that's kind of what's going on there. So um, Changeling, I'm giving like a 3, 3.5. Um, Lothair's getting a solid 5. And then I picked up again the audiobook for Touch of Ruin by Scarlet St. Clair. I've, I'm about halfway through that as well. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. Me and the hubs are going to go get some treats. And I'll check in with you guys tomorrow because I don't think I'm going to vlog anymore tonight. Hi friends, Shay here. Technically editing Shay here because I realized I never closed out this vlog. So I did finish A Touch of Ruin by Scarlett St. Clair and I gave it a solid four stars. Um, this series is really great and really solid. I think I'm just spoiled for Hades and Persephone because of Neon Gods by Katie Robert. But A Touch of Ruin really does add a lot to the story and the dynamic between this particular Hades and Persephone. Um, I can understand why people love it, but I can also understand why it's not for some people. And this definitely feels like a middle filler book. I'm interested in the next book, and I do have a copy of that. So I do intend to read that very soon. But yeah, this vlog was super fun. I didn't really do a ton of reading on Sunday. I did a little bit of my reread, and I finished A Touch of Ruin. Just because Saturday ended up being crazier than we originally planned. So anyways, thank you to Izzy for doing this with me. It was great to focus on reading for a couple of days. And I hope to do it again soon. With that said, I hope you guys have checked out her video. If not, her channel's linked in the corner. So you can definitely check her out. 
And yeah, if you made it to the end of this vlog, put a hmm, crown emoji because you are a king or queen for making it through this entire thing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.